All right, we will go ahead and get started. Um, people can join on whenever they can. Uh, there's no stop time for people who can join on. So just catch up. If you have any questions, please shoot them at me at any time and I will address them uh, when we can. So today we're gonna go over a demo of the new photo and app. I believe that Android's been released for about a few weeks and iOS has just released recently. So we'll go through and I'll show you all of the new features and how you can utilize them out in the field. So let me start by sharing my screen with you. Please let me know if you cannot see my air server. You should see it should be a red background and photo and app should be in the top left. I'll wait a few seconds in case anyone wants to raise their hand and let me know they can't see it. All right. Well, to continue, so when you click on the photo and app or tap on the photo and app, it's going to automatically take you into camera mode. And you'll see that it captured my location. And a new feature we have is if you have multiple projects nearby, it's going to pop up this project list and it's going to let you select from all of the nearby projects. So I can select from whatever list. I can also search right here in the search bar. I can search for the project that I'm looking for. Also, if you do not have any projects configured, it will force you, it will pop up the screen and it will force you to create a project. Whether you want to use the address of where you're located or you want to create a new project name right then and there on site, you can do so, but it will not let you proceed to take photos unless the project name is configured. And like I said, it can be an address or a new project name, but something must be configured. So once you've selected the project name that you want, tap save. And you'll see that it'll save that project name up at the top. And you can always go back and change it any time. Uh, once you've selected a project name, every photo moving forward will capture that project name. So you don't have to keep adding it or um, saving it for every photo. But if you want to change it, you can. And then once you change it to a different project, all photos after that will hold that new project name that you just selected and so on and so forth. We have the refresh icons so that'll refresh your location. You know, if it's not capturing the correct address and you think that maybe you just need to recalibrate the GPS, uh, you can do so by tapping on the refresh icon. Uh, you'll see review and edit at the bottom. When it's off, that means you can take consecutive photos without any interruptions. So and it'll track right here how many photos you're taking. By turning it on, it's gonna ask you to edit each photo after capture. And it just depends on your process whether you want to Make sure you edit those photos or you want to take those photos quickly and then go back and add the tags uh, to them. And also before I continue, please feel free to ask any questions at any time. Uh, I will stop and answer them for you uh, once I see them. All right, moving forward, we have a new feature on the web portal is required tags. So you can set these up on the web portal. These are tags that must be applied to photos when you're out on site taking and capturing. Uh, so when you do take a photo, I think my air server disappeared. Hold on one second, guys. There we go. So I took the photo and then this tag popped up. So the ones with the stars, these are required tags. So when you capture a photo, it's gonna ask you to apply these tags and you cannot move forward without applying them. So building, I'll just start selecting tags and some of these you can create single list choice which means that you can only choose one option or you can have a list where you can choose multiple options from when i'm done selecting these tags i can choose to remember these selections this means that moving forward any photo that i take is going to remember these tag selections so i don't have to keep adding them and the tag window will not keep popping up so i'll click save and now it's going to bring me back to camera mode so I can start capturing new photos. I'll pause for just a few seconds in case anyone has any questions about capturing, review and edit, required tags, uh, project names, etc. All right, moving forward. So you can edit most recently so uh, recently captured photos, excuse me, by tapping on the thumbnail in the bottom right, or you can go back to gallery right here uh, by clicking on this icon. But we'll go ahead and we'll go to the most recently captured photo. 
and you'll see that it captured the project name. If we click on tags at the bottom toolbar, you'll see that those tags uh, are there that we added. You can add more tags. So if I go to my last tag category and apply trade values, I can apply those and then I can update remembered selections so that those new tags that I just applied will be remembered for all the photos moving forward. You can always change it later on, but that way, if you know that you're gonna be taking photos that are gonna be capturing the same tag values, you can update and remember those selections so you don't have to do it for every photo. So I'll tap save. Comment is gonna open up the comments so that you can add them to the photo. You can type them in or you can use um, the voice to text option. So if you click on the microphone down here, that's gonna allow you to use voice to text. So um, let's see, I'll just come up with a quick comment. Fix the blinds on the door. All right, I finished that comment, so I click save, and that comment will be applied to the photo. Tapping anywhere on the photo is gonna allow you to annotate. And you can do the same thing, you can type it in, you can use voice to text, whichever is easiest. Um, I'll just put blinds. Double tapping is gonna allow you to edit, copy, or delete that annotation. Holding down the annotation is gonna allow you to move it anywhere. So that's still the same. Uh, from the previous version of PhotoIn. Uh, but you'll see there's obviously a new design. It's going to be a new experience for you as a user. Uh, tapping on the address at the top. Tapping on the address, that's going to give you the key information. So you'll see the title of the photo. You'll see the project, which you can edit once again uh, by searching or selecting from nearby project. Uh, you'll also have the address. And what's new is that you can edit the address. So if you know what the address is that you're at and it's not capturing quite the exact uh, street number, you can go ahead and edit that. And when you're finished, just tap on the project name again and it'll pull up that menu. And that's how you edit these photos. Um, and also real quick, if you click on the, um, the action menu in the top right, that's gonna give you the option to email the photo out or to preview it as a PDF. And from there, you would also be able to email it out. So if we preview the photo as a PDF, it's gonna package it up nicely for you. And you'll also have the option to email it out by clicking, by tapping on the email icon. I'll pause for a few more seconds in case anyone has any questions about editing the photo. Oh, I apologize, everyone. I believe I was not showing my screen. Uh, let me go back through and show one more time. Uh, I'll pause for a second to make sure that you can see my screen. I do apologize for that. All right, so I'll go through the edit screen one more time. So when you look at the photo, you'll see the toolbar at the bottom. And if you tap on tag, it's gonna have all the tags that you applied before that were required when you're capturing the photo. And I also applied a couple more tags under the trade value, under the trade category. I added plumbing and electrical, those values to the photo. And you can update the remembered selection so that moving forward, all the photos that you are taking are going to remember those updated tag selections, and you won't have to go back and do it for every photo. So I'll tap Save. Comments. If you tap on Comment in the toolbar, it's going to pop open the comment box, and you can add comments and keywords by typing them in by using the voice to text option, which is the microphone down here. And tapping Save will save that comment to the photo. Again, tapping anywhere on the photo is gonna allow you to annotate. You can type in or use voice to text again. Double tapping on the annotation is gonna allow you to edit or copy it. Holding down on the annotation is gonna allow you to move it. And like I said, that feature is still the same from previous versions. Next, if you tap on the project name at the top, it's gonna to open up key information. So it's gonna have the title of the photo. It's gonna have the project name, which you can edit again if you need to change it and it's going to have a list of nearby projects or you can search uh, in the search box. 
So if I tap save, it's going to bring back key information. And another new feature with this version is you can edit the address, like I said. So if you know that the address that's showing up here that's populating doesn't have the correct street number or the zip code is off by a number, you can change it here and save it. Tap it on the project name, we'll pull up that menu again. We have the action menu in the top right. So clicking on that is going to give you the option to email the photo out to multiple recipients. You also have the option to preview the photo as a PDF, so it'll package it up nicely for you. And tapping on the email icon at the top is going to allow you to email out the PDF. I'll go ahead and pause again if there's any questions about editing the photo. All right, I'll go ahead and keep chugging along. So the icon in the top left, this is going to go back to gallery. So if I click on that, it's going to bring me back to gallery and show all the photos that I've taken. From the gallery, you're going to have a couple of options. Filtering. So if we click on filter at the bottom toolbar, it's going to allow me to filter by different categories. We have projects, address, date, and device. So if I tap on project, it's going to bring up my list of projects. Address, same thing. And I can filter by any of these options and by tapping save. When you're finished filtering, you can go back to filter and click clear all. You can also search by tapping on the magnifying glass icon at the top and search by any keyword. So I'll search by window. And it'll bring up any photos that have window within a tag, a comment, an annotation, a project name, et cetera. Anywhere in the photo that window is visible or present, it's going to pull up that photo for me. And by tapping on the magnifying glass icon again and clicking cancel, it's gonna bring up all of these photos for me again in my gallery. By tapping on the check mark icon at the top, that's gonna to allow me to select multiple photos. And from here, it, you can choose to delete these photos. You can choose to email out multiple photos by tapping on the email icon, or you can also batch tag these photos. So I select the photos that I want, and tap on the tag icon at the top. And I can choose from any of my tag categories and select whichever values I want to apply to those photos. So I'll tap building B, save. If you have required tag values, you'll have to make sure that you apply all of the values from each of those, or apply value from each of those categories. So I'll tap save. And so now all the uh, photos have been updated with the new tags. When you're viewing the photos in the gallery, this is the list view. So if you tap on the map icon at the top, it's going to pull up all of the photos on the map for you, and they're going to be represented by a pin. If I go back to the list view, it's going to bring up my photos, uh, showing the photo information and the thumbnail along with it. If you tap on the more menu icon in the top right, that's going to bring up some options. You can import photos from your camera roll on your device. Uh, settings is going to bring you to where you can configure sync settings, report settings, project notification settings. Uh, you also have the option to send feedback. So that is going to email myself and our development team. If you're having an issue or if you want to ask any questions, please feel free and send us some feedback. Um, and then help will also take you to our support page where you can view how-to videos, uh, FAQs, best practices, you'll be able to view those there. Also, in the toolbar, you can start a report. Tap on report. You'll see basic report. If you configure your own reports on the web portal, they will also show here. And you can tap on whichever report you would like to start, and you can start filling out the information. You'll see that I already started filling out this basic report. I'll preview it as a PDF. It'll package it up nicely for me, and then I can choose to email it out uh, by tapping on the mail icon. If I go back to the report and tap on the action menu, I'll be able to finish and upload it, which will take the report out of my device, and it'll sync it to my storage repository and from there to the web portal. All right, and I'll go back to the gallery. And tapping on the camera icon finally at the bottom right, that's going to take you back into camera mode. And you'll see that it's still capturing that project name I selected, and you can continue to take photos. And that is the new 
Soto and apps. If you have any questions, please shoot them at me. I'm going to be on for a couple more minutes. And I also have recorded the session so that it will be up later in case you want to rewatch it um, to see what we went over today. Thank you so much.